Hello, my name's Barbara. This year I wanted to make a change in my life so that I had a way to express my artistic, creative, and practical nature. So I started a blog, Barbara Ann's Handcrafted, which is on my website, barbaradenunzio.com, and I will list that in the links below in the description. This particular video is a do-it-yourself paper bead rolling tool. Now, if you've never made any paper beads and just wish to try it, I'm going to show you how to make a free tool. If you want to play a little bit more but want something a little sturdier, I'll show you how to make one with a cotter pin. And if you really, really love bead rolling, I'll show you how you can make a set of multiple sizes like the one I made here and I'll describe those a little later. Now I also made a little holder for mine so they're not rolling all around which is just a couple pieces of wood glued together and then I made corresponding holes so that each one has its own little place and they all stand up but they don't take a whole lot of space up and again we'll talk about that set a little later as the last one since that's a really um, more involved. So let's move them out of the way for now and we're going to start with the free tool that you can make. So what you'll need is you'll need a toothpick and you will need a strip of paper. I cut mine a half inch or one inch wide and it's 11 inches long based on a full sheet of paper. And uh, as you can see, mine's just from an old calendar, just scrap paper. You want to take your bead and you want to kind of line it up at the end. And using your fingers and your th thumb and fingers, you want to just kind of start pinching it against the toothpick and start to kind of roll it. And once you get it, it'll start rolling, it'll tuck itself in. And you just use your thumb and finger, thumbs and your fingers because on a smooth surface, it has a tendency to slip. So you're going to have to kind of hold that as you roll it up. While you're rolling, you want to try to keep the edges as even as possible. Uh, this method is a little harder to do because you having to use both hands so it's harder to adjust. So just keep rolling and every once in a while stop and check and see. If it's not perfect, I'm going to show you how to get it looking a little better when we get to the end of the strip. So right now we're just going to keep rolling and if it starts to go off more you can try to straighten it up a little. Just kind of tug it whichever way it needs to go. And it's going off track. Don't worry, I'll show you how to fix that. So we're just going to get this rolled the whole way down to the bottom and then we're going to be putting a little glue on it. Now I use white paper glue which sticks pretty quickly and I have this neat little bottle that came with my quilling set. I'm just going to squirt glue along the bottom and then you're just going to kind of press it up and hold it flat against that bead. It only takes a few seconds because the paper glue grabs to the paper pretty quickly. So it's staying in place. So we're going to gently slide that toothpick out. Now, to straighten it up, what I'm going to do is, because I'm a little off track, if you can see that, we're just going to stand it on one end and do a tap, tap, tap with anything flat. I'm just using the bottom end of the dowel from one of my tools. Then that's your handle. You're going to take your glue and you're going to squirt some glue in the inside. And then slide your toothpick back in. Now this toothpick has an ugly end, so we're going to make sure that gets slid. And once he's back in there, you just want to set him aside so he can glue and set up. But there's your free tool that you can roll paper beads on. I prefer to use a cotter pin, and the reason is cotter pins, they have a slit and when you start rolling around that it grabs the paper and it's easier to hang on to the paper so it doesn't slip. There are three ways to make this. The simplest one if you don't have a hacksaw will be to make your own handle and the reason that you have to make your own handle is because 
A cotter pin has a little loop on the end. And if you can't cut that off, you have to have somewhere for it to go. So this bead is a two-part bead, which makes a little um, a pocket in the bottom for it to disappear into. So we're going to slide that off so I can show you how to make your own. You're going to start with a half inch by 11 inch piece of paper. And you're going to slide it into the group, into that slot between the two side halves. And you want to line it up with the bottom. And then just gently start to roll it. And it kind of grips it in place so it's easier to roll. And then just keep rolling. You don't want to roll too, too tight either because you don't, you're going to have to slip them off, whether you're using a toothpick method or a cotter pin method. If you roll too tightly, then it's hard to get the bead off of the roller. So you want to firm, but not too firm. So we're just going to keep rolling. And I use this hand to kind of hold it in place. And then I can just go rolling with the cotter pin. When I get down to the bottom of it, I'm going to put a little glue on the end again and hold it flat against the bead for a second. Now, one strip of paper may not be enough depending on the width of that loop because you want this inner bead to be as wide as that loop so that the second bead that you roll on the top of it hat makes the pocket. So to do that, I have a small ruler and if I can let's see if you can see that, but I looks like I don't have quite enough. It's going to be a tight fit. So I'm going to take a second piece of paper and where I ended the last strip, I'm going to add some glue and I'm going to start a new strip of paper on there. I'm just kind of line him up, hold him in place for a few minutes until he sets. If you try to do them too quickly, then he's going to slip off. Now, I'm just going to kind of hold him there with my finger as I start that new paper around. If I have a new strip of paper on top of him, that'll help hold him down. And I'm just going to roll. I'm not going to roll this whole strip because I just need a little bit of extra to make sure that I have enough. I'd say probably maybe about three quarters of a strip. Better to have too much than not enough. So that looks like it'd be good. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear off the extra strip. And I'm going to add my glue. And press it down until it holds. Now, this is the inner part of the bead. This is what's going to be sliding down on there. Now before I roll the second half, I'm going to go ahead and gently slide him off. And the reason I want to do that, one, is so I can, you know, do a tap, tap, tap and make him. But if you look in the inside of this bead, there's a little strip of paper that goes across. And that's because that's what was in between the cotter pin. And that's going to get in the way if you try to slide that down in. So just go ahead and go back in there. Put your, oops. Put your cotter pin back in the center here and that kind of pushes that little piece up against the side. And then your bead will slide the whole way down to your loop. Now you're going to roll the second half of the bead which is going to create your pocket. So for that I have a one inch strip of paper, actually it's slightly less, and I'm going to just go ahead and start my paper on top of where I ended and you want to keep you know the one that's towards the top lined up with the top edge. Now I might hold this for a f make sh I just want to make sure this is really holding well before I start to roll because it's a little floppier down here on the end where you don't have any support. So hold it in place as I start to roll it just kind of pinch it in place and once I get it going I'm going to flip it around just because I like it I can see better coming from the bottom oops 
All right. And that's just a preference that if you're going to make paper beads, you'll you'll get comfortable with which methods uh, you like to do, which you don't. There are a lot of great videos out there on paper bead making. Um, just go on YouTube and run a search and you'll find tons of them to watch. Watch as many as you can because everybody has different ideas and different ways of doing things. And you'll want to try some of those methods to find out which one works the best for you. Now, once you get down to the strip again, you're going to add your glue and press it in place. And once it's kind of grabbed, you have your tool. So, he doesn't. so you can see there's that little pocket in there that the end slides into. Now, this is a little floppier because it's empty, so if you want to firm that up, get a hot glue gun and just squirt some hot glue down in there. That'll help keep it in place if you're going to keep the handle like this, and it'll give you some firmness. So that is a slightly improved tool using a cotter pin. Now the cotter pins, um, the length is going to be depending on what you're working with. And um, I like to have at least about an inch hanging out. So I think that you could get by um, with an inch and a half which if you go to Lowe's you can get a package of cotter pins that are three and three thirty three and three three and thirty three thirty two um, and they're one and a half inch long and it's a three pack for like sixty sixty nine cents <coughs> if you want to if you're going to use a wooden handle like what we're going to make next you probably need a little bit longer because you're going to be cutting off that loop that's in your cotter pin so uh, those you can go to Home Home Depot has some three and thirty second inch cotter pins, three in a pack, um, that are two inches long, and again seventy five cents, so very affordable. So that's the one that you make with your own handle, which is slightly improved but still nice. Now, if you want to keep making beads and you want various sizes, which is what I went with because I wanted to make some big Pandora style beads that would slide over my kumahimo um, or over beaded tubes depending on what I was making and so I got my cotter pins at a place called boltsdepot.com and because I had to pay shipping which was only about five dollars I decided to get one of each size so I would have an assortment now if you remember in the picture you saw mine were pretty long they don't need to be that long um, I originally made mine because I had made a rolling machine which I was trying to use them with and I didn't like the way the rolling on the machine felt or how it worked so I did cut down a couple of mine already and eventually I'll cut down these others and then I have another half of a cotter pin to make another small tool with for somebody else who might need one the only thing different with these is you're going to be cutting off that looped end that I showed you. So first you want to go ahead and wrap some tape around so it keeps it into place and doesn't slip around when you're cutting. And you're going to need a hacksaw. If you're using very small ones you might be able to cut it with a, um, a wire cutter um, or you know heavy duty wire cutter. It's going to give you a sharp edge though that you're going to have to kind of sand down and on these what you're going to do is you're just going to take a piece of dowel mine are about one and a half inch I tried one that was just one inch and it I did I wanted to hold more in my hand it worked with my thumb but I just liked having a little more so I went ahead and made them one and a half inch and again these were just from scraps in my garage so the smaller size worked for most of them but when I got up to these larger ones I had to go ahead and find some pieces that were bigger because this would have never fit in there and had enough stability for the handle so just find you know scrap pieces down to, based on the size of your cotter pin so all you're going to do with those is cut your piece of cotter pin and you're going to drill a hole down in the center of it about an inch and a quarter maybe a little bit more um, with the inch and a half or the two inch cotter pins I like to leave um, about an 
inch or so sticking out and of course you lose some of that length when you cut the loop off so whatever is left once you have you know whatever you want sticking out just drill the rest hole deep enough to accommodate the rest and then you're going to stick some glue in your hole and just slide your cotter pins in. I'm not going to show you that right now. I did mine on a drill press because I'm luck lucky enough to have one. So that gave me a hole that was fairly straight. Now if you're going to try to do it with a hand drill, you can. Just try to get it as straight as possible. But you're also going to want to have your hole a tiny bit bigger because if it's not perfectly straight, you have room to wiggle it when you're gluing it together and you know mine aren't perfectly straight e either even with the drill press but they're functional so um, like the small one here and it's the same process you just have different size cotter pins you put your paper in and you start rolling it around but you'll see how much easier it is with the wooden handle you can hold your paper strip against your fingers and your thumb and just start rolling it's way faster if it goes off it's easy to adjust it just gives you something to grab onto while you're rolling that bead and makes the process a little simpler so again well, I forgot to put my top on so the glue dried so that's something <laughs> up there that's something that you'd have to use if you're using this type of glue thing some people use a brush some people use a toothpick dipped in some glue whatever method works for you um, you have to find the best thing and then once you have your bead roll you're going to slide them off now this particular bead that I showed you for the handles is called a tube or a cylinder bead and that's just because it's a straight straight tube um, it's made with a rectang long rectangular piece of paper but you can change this type of bead you make by how the paper is cut like in a long triangle or um, the shape and the material used if I use a card sock it's going to make a thicker bead uh, you could roll them with fabric depending on your material and what you're rolling on the size of the thing gives you the beads and you'll get to play around with that and experiment with that as you go so thank you for joining me if you want to see the written instructions, go to the website and check out the blog and it'll have that on there. Thank you.